Yamuna Tira Varna Chari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janava Laba Girivarid Hari Yasoda Nandana Prajachana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Hmm. Jaya Radha Madhava has all the Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan are included inside the song. Srila Prabhupada once told us that Jairada Madhava is Kunja Bihari, Yasoda Nandana, that Krishna is the son of Mother Yasoda Nandana, Gopi Jana Vallabha, he's the lover of the gopis. So there's a lot inside that one song. This is why we sing it every day. Um, I don't have a book or a, and I can't see the board. So I could just tell you this Bhagavat Purana is brilliant as the sun. It's arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna to his own abode, accompanied by religion, knowledge, and so on. And persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of ignorance in the age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. Did anybody bring your Srimad Bhagavatam to class today? You'll have to find a verse for me. Oh. Why aren't we doing a verse? Okay. I've been going to the Russian classes, so I'm a little out of touch of what we're doing right here. Like today, uh, yeah, 10th Canal. Yes, please. Today, Hari Leela is giving class. When I say Russian classes, they're actually always in English, or like 90% of the time, and then translated into Russian, so it's a small crowd and a lot of nice speakers, so I've been, I started getting in the habit of going over there. And 
So today, we're talking about the prayers of the demigods to Lord Krishna. So what's happened so far is that Kamsa was a big demon who uh, heard the voice in the sky that he was going to be killed by a little baby. And he put his sister and brother-in-law in, in the prison and slaughtered all the children that, that they gave birth to, up to number six. And then the next child was Lord Balaram, who he was transferred over to the womb of Rohini. So he didn't get slaughtered. And then there was a lot of information about Lord Balaram. He's a nun to He's a source of all the Vishnu incarnations of Krishna. So now Krishna's in the womb of Devaki and Kamsa is always worried about this because he can understand that that um, that child is going to be that this is the child number eight he's he's been counting and the eighth child is it all started with the voice in the sky which we figured came from the demigods that said the eighth child of your sister is going to be uh, the one that's going to kill you so he's quite concerned because he's a demon um, demons, they worry about themselves. That's the quality of being a demon, is that they have no compassion f for others. They only worry about their own personal uh, uh, sen sense pleasure, their own personal prosperity. They don't have any love for anybody else. Although they may put on a show like they may cooperate with another demon, but then they, in the, at the end of the day, they always just care about themselves. Uh, sometimes when we talk about modern demons, we come up with conspiracy theories. Because you can see that the demons will work together and exploit many millions of people or kill many millions of people and do things they seem to work together sometimes so they call that a conspiracy you know like look at all the bankers and and we throw around words like trilateral commission or the illuminati we, you know uh, we ha talk about these how demons work t working together but actually they never really trust one another they never really love one another uh, they can turn on each other at any time. Just like the demons w were fighting over the uh, nectar drink uh, the, with the demigods and the demons, they fought over this uh, nectar of immortality that came from the churning of the Mandara Mountain. Uh, Kurma Rupa appeared and after a great struggle, the demons prevailed and they got hold of this this immortality nectar that they were everybody they were all looking forward to to drinking and and then they st but instead they started fighting amongst each other right they started uh, saying who's going to drink it first and then they uh, got into a fight and then Mo Mo Krishna appeared as Mohini Murti. Because demons, they always like women. So she came along and then gr grabbed it out. And she talked them into handing it over to her. And then she just went over to the demigods and gave it to them. Uh, there was one demon that was kind of crafty. 
named Rahu, and then he disguised himself as uh, one of the demigods to try to get, get in on the nectar, and he actually got a little bit. But because Mohini Murti was Krishna, she uh, chopped off his head with the Sudarshan Chakra, and then he uh, became a, 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 a type of a planet, like a big rock that's going around the Earth closer to what the scientists think the moon is than the actual moon. The actual moon is, as we can see, it's, it's, it's a great, powerful planet that actually gives life to vegetables. And it's huge, you know, it's one of Krishna's eyes. Krishna has two eyes and Bhagavad Gita says, I've got the eyes, the eye of the moon and eye of the, of the sun. And the moon's supposed to be farther away than the sun so th there's no chance that in today, either 50 years ago or today, that somebody can, on this planet can get inside of a, a metal spacecraft and, and go to the moon. Uh, they, if, I mean, have you ever met anybody who's ever been to the moon? No. So if, they could, if it was that easy to go to, in 1969, it, certainly in 2019, 50 years later, it would be more people have gone to the moon. You, you know, there'd be like a regular, you know, it's like we have uh, buses that go to Calcutta and back. There'd be a way to get to the moon. But since that's not going on, we can understand that they can't get there. But Prabhupada did say that maybe they, they landed on Rahu. Uh, Rahu sometimes is described as eating the moon, that's called a solar eclipse or a moon eclipse. So Rahu's buzzing around. But the point is that demons are uh, the opposite of devotees. They, they're full of envy and they have personal desires and they don't trust anybody. They, they, um, they'll do anything for their own survival. Whereas a Vaishnava will sacrifice like Lord Jesus Christ, he sacrificed himself to go um, save others. And there was the story of Vasudev Dot, who wanted to take on all the sins of everybody in the whole universe so that they could be delivered back to Godhead. So Vaishnavas think like that. We had Srila Prabhupada, he, he was always full of compassion. And he, he sacrificed his own personal comfort to travel across the ocean to get to America. So because he knew that he had to spread Krishna consciousness in, in the West before it would spread anywhere else. Uh, he tried for a long time preaching to Indian people, but he could see that they were just, they were also interested in the West and then they, and making money and, and making and trying to become an industrialized nation. So he sat, he gave up a, a very comfortable position in Vrindavan. Just like we have a comfortable position here in Mayapur. Right? Everybody likes we like living here. And it's nice Prashadam and it's the devotees are everywhere. But then there's the mission, like Hari Sari was saying the other day that um, we have to, in the Jaipataka Swami Seminar Sangha, JSS, Hari Sari gave a lecture and he said that we have to try to preach somehow, you know, for a lot of us it means we have to go back to our countries or to another country, we have to get out and, do, and preach to people, to bring them to Krishna consciousness and give up uh, a nice life here in Mayapur. Not forever, but you know, for some time to be able to spread Krishna consciousness. Uh, we get purified by being in this holy dawn. And uh, therefore give up all other desires and aspirations 
live in Mayapur, worship Gaur Hari. You need no longer fear the bondage of material objects, for it is certain that you will attain the service of Gauranga's lotus feet. By the Lord's mercy, liberated souls can always see the pastimes of Krishna and Gora in this holy dom, Sri Mayapur dom. Lamentation, fear, all causes of disturbance, all material desires, and all the afflictions upon a conditioned soul cannot exist here. So this is a great place of pilgrimage. That, that's a verse from Bhishma Dev. Bhishma Dev appeared here in Mayapur, like so many other great personalities that have come here for purification. But then eventually you have to go out and or, or preach to people or there's also preaching to people here in Mayapur. That's another way if you, you don't want to leave Mayapur, you can take up the mission of preaching to people here. Like uh, we go out on Harinam. Is, has anybody here ever gone on Harinam here in Mayapur? All the devotees here, Mataji, anybody? Well, you might want to try it sometime. It's a great way to, to reach others, um, especially if when the kirtan spreads into the crowd and everybody starts chanting Hare Krishna. Because really, the, what we're trying to, what we call preaching is just spreading the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And there's people who come here, they're attracted by uh, what's actually a, a really nice uh, theme park. <laughs> it's, a, it's a theme park that there's no, you don't have to charge. You don't, people aren't charged at the gate. Like uh, in America, we have Disney World and Disneyland. Um, there are theme parks that you go there and you experience a different kind of reality. And uh, they're really expensive. Like they, you, you pay to get in the door. You pay every time you eat. You have to pay to get on any of the rides, to go inside any of the exhibits. You're constantly just paying for every. But here, there's prashadam is provided for people and people are given a... Uh, a great time is is wonderful clean grounds that they can walk around and there's a fountain back there and they they go and relax like out in the park behind the temple and of course they'll eventually there'll be the Burmandala uh, Bur the t temple of the planetarium which is already an exhibit even though it's not finished yet it's quite amazing to look at, and then there's, uh, of course, the, the, the greatest feast for the eyes, the Shri Radha Madhava, and the, the eight, their eight associates, and then the Panchatattva. And Panchatattva is absolutely amazing, isn't it? The Krishna and five features. Uh, any, you know, we all have ex experience of seeing Shushi Panchatattva and, and having their darshan. Uh, this is the Panchatattva room. So this is a, that's another way to preach without having to leave Mayapur is by help guiding people, making friends with them, teaching them how to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, sell them a book. One of Srila Prabhupada's books, introduce them to Srila Prabhupada because he's in his books. And Prabhupada wanted us to preach to people like that. He, he said, I remember there was one morning walk in 1976 that um, Srila Prabhupada said that we should just stop everything that's going on all over the world and bring all of our, you know, close down everything and just bring all the devotees here and just develop Mayapur. And then uh, Rameshwar was walking next to Prabhupada at, on this walk and, and he, he almost had a stroke because, you know, what was Prabhupada saying, you know? 
<laughs> and he says, but Srila Prabhupada, we have so many preaching projects going on all over the world. And then Prabhupada said, well, we'll preach to people here. We'll, bring, we'll attract the whole world to Mayapur, which has become a famous statement. And he said that we'll build, we can build an airport. And he pointed his cane over in this direction, where um, kind of behind the Goshal. Where, and he said that an airport can be built there. And then people will come from all over the world and then we'll preach to them. Uh, since that conversation didn't end up in the folio, I uh, confronted Rameshwar about it a couple years ago, in 2016. I ran into him for the first time in uh, a long time. <laughs> and I, I immediately wanted to kind of confirm this with him because I, I, I um, tell this story sometimes and I like to make sure that uh, I got it right. And I said, Rameshwar Prabhu, do you remember in 1976 when Srila Prabhupada said to close everything and then just bring all the devotees here and develop Mayapur? And he said, well, Prabhupada says something like that. And I said, he didn't say something like that. He said exactly that. And then you said, but Prabhupada, we have so many pre preaching projects going on all over the world. And then Prabhupada said, we'll bring people here to preach to them. You remember that, don't you? And then he said, yes, but that's not really what he meant. What he meant was that Mayapur is very important. So I settled for that because I was happy enough that he didn't just deny me, you know, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Prabhupada said, who? Prabhupada who? You know, but he confirmed that, yeah, Prabhupada did say that. Now, whether Prabhupada really meant it literally or just to show the importance of Mayapur, we'll never know. But we do know that it was very important to Srila Prabhupada to, that we reach the people that do, who do come to Mayapur, that, they, that everybody who comes in is a guest to Shushi Radha Madhava, and that they have a, a good time while they're here and have a chance to get an association of devotees, have a chance to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, hear the holy name. So we do that with... It's, it's actually very, there's a lot of preaching going on here. It's really very inspiring. Uh, Srila Jaya Pataka Swami is our, the fearless leader that heads up the preaching. He understands how to make devotees in Bengal. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, I have a, a family, my one of my sons married a Bengali and her name is Shakipran Devi Dasi. So Jai Pataka Swami has made the, the whole family into devotees. This is his uh, expertise. He understands, you might notice that Bengalis, they, they stick together in packs, right? They, you, you rarely see anybody come in, uh, by themselves. You know, they're always in, in a group. It's generally like you can see a whole family, you know, sort of like a changing body exhibit. You know, there's like the uh, little ones and then there's, you know, the teenagers and then there's mom and dad and then there's grandpa and, gran and maybe, maybe great grandma, you know, she's in the wheelchair. So, Jaya Pataka Swami understands th that if you're going to make devotees around here, you have to make the whole family into a devotees. So we go to visit my, the in-laws of my family. Uh, my son Nabhadeep Chandra, he married a Shaki Pran Devi Dasi, who's a disciple of Jaya Pataka Swami. She's, her sister is Sanantan Gopi, David Dasi, and 
She's married to Prema Chaitanya Prabhu. Some of you might know him. He, he runs the Ganga temple down at the Ganga at Prabhupada Ghat. Uh, it's a pretty well-known family. Uh, his father and mother are uh, Sunya Kanya Devi Dasi and Pankaj Natra Das. And they run a shop over there by the uh, Samadhi. Next to, there's like a, a Goshal booth and then they have a shop. And they have another shop up here on the wall. And then his brother-in-law, Prema Chaitanya's brother is Leela Maritadas. So they live in one big gigantic house that has about 20 rooms. And the whole family is Jaipataka Swami disciples. And he doesn't have a, he may have a lot of disciples, but they're, they're not cheap initiations. These devotees are all pretty, quite serious, I noticed. They uh, have an artik every single day. You can go there at uh, 6.30, quarter to 7. And they have a full altar. It's, it's because a lot of temples I've seen, actually. They have Gorni Thai, Jagannath Baladev, Subhadra, and Radha and Krishna Didis. And, and uh, it's quite a big altar. And the whole family, they come to the temple. If they come to the, to the Mandir, then it's, 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 a, it's a pilgrimage. You know, they also, Prima Chaitanya has a son and a daughter. And everybody's devotees. This is uh, by the power, the mercy of Jayapataka Swami. Uh, one devotee was asking me, uh, where, where was, when did Prabhupada say that Jayapataka Swami was a, a associate of Lord Chaitanya? And I said, well, I don't, I don't know exactly, but I can tell that he's fully, he has the mercy of Lord Chaitanya pouring through him all the time. He's able to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission and he actually gets the credit for making all these devotees. Uh, I, I've always uh, appreciated Mayapur because it's a whole city full of devotees. When I was a new bhakta, I had a dream of uh, some city that was, everybody was a devotee. They, they chanting japa, they had tilak, neck beads, dhotis on, saris, kuntimala. So that's that's Mayapur, you know, the, the town that Srila Prabhupada built. And Prabhupada made it, he made the framework, and then it's been filled in by Jayapataka Swami and the devotees who have assisted him. And, I, and it's very, um, very systematic here to, on how they make devotees. Like, in, in, there's some places in the world now that the temples have become, ISKCON temples are, are running, but they're kind of running on a, a, a maintenance mode rather than really expanding. But here we can see that Mayapur is always expanding. Like uh, Janani Vas told me one time that there was, that the other different holy places in, in India are like lotus flowers that are closing up because they're being covered by the Kali Yuga influence. But the golden lotus, the Sridham Mayapur, is blossoming, opening, and, and with the TOVP it being built, it's, it's become the place where the mercy of Lord Chaitanya is emanating from and going and spreading all over the world. Like here, you can see that they it, it starts off with people will will come and just and just they'll come they'll come from a long way. Some there's people who come here from all over the all over the world and all all over India and actually especially from Calcutta area. You know, it's this is a or this is a close place, you know, somewhere to go for a holiday. 
So there's so many buses kind of rolling in all the time and people getting here on train and all the different, you know, trains, planes, automobiles. And then they, they get inside and have a, they may meet a devotee, who sell them a book, but then they find, they, they go to the Arctic and then they find out about the morning program. So then they come to the morning program and it's quite likely that if, the, if they go to Mongol Arctic that, that they'll get caught up in the, the Japa seminar, right? Then it's time to chant Japa and then everybody's all gathered around. You know, not, not, every, not everybody goes for it, but a, a large percentage of the guests sit down and they get handed some beads and they chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare and chant their first round. And as the prophet says that once somebody starts chanting Hare Krishna mantra, then they become devotees. And if they like it, then they start chanting more. And then they um, get serious because the purification of the holy name, Chaito Darbana Marjanam Bhava Maha Divagna Navapinam that the holy name of the Lord cleanses the heart and people start becoming devotees. Like we say sometimes that both the demon and the devotee are inside the same body in, in Kali Yuga. You know, we were reading about Krishna killing so many demons in Vrindavan because back then there was like demons and then there was devotees so Krishna could kill the demons and then, not, you know, not like the Yadai Yadai Dharma Sha Glani Bharata Bharata get you get rid of the demons and then you then you take take care of the devotees. But in Kali Yuga we have a kind of a mixture, you know, with like um like George Harrison, right? We all everybody here has heard of George Harrison the Beatles because we know that he get a fantastic service for Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada brought him, took him back to Godhead. He spread the holy name all over the world. Uh, he had a, devotees who knew him. I, I read s some biographies and he, he kind of had a little mixed personality sometimes. In the 80s, he didn't really feel like uh, Hare Krishna. He, he, he just wanted to forget about that for a while. He was making a lot of money. He was really famous, and uh, and he just kind of shelved Hare Krishna for a little bit and wanted to just enjoy life as you know as a famous rock star. And uh, Makunda came to see him during that time, and he turned him he turned him away. He said that you know that uh, Hare Krishna stuff was that was a long time ago. You know, I'm not really into that right now. You know, he started eating non-veg. Uh, but then, uh, the way the material energy is, Maya has a different potency. She, you know, one of them is that she covers, like she can cover us up and we can become completely forgetful of Krishna. But then she also has another potency that she kicks. And she kind of sort of kicks us back into our you know, our senses, so we start coming to uh, seeing things from Krishna's point of view. <laughs> so George, he, uh, during that time, I remember he, he uh, ate some mushrooms to try to enjoy a psychedelic experience, but then he, he got so high that he, he fell. It was in Hawaii, and he fell and he cracked his head open uh, on, this, on the cement of a swimming pool. So we go to have a good time at a swimming pool, but if you fall and hit your head and it cracks open, then, well, that's not so much fun. And then uh, later on, he got a attacked in his house and somebody stabbed him. And he started going back to Krishna consciousness real quick. He started, he, you know, when the, <laughs> when the man was... Uh, 
stabbing him, he was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And then he ended up, he, yeah, he, he, he liked to smoke. Uh, I remember one time I read one newspaper article that they said, that, well, what do you think of the Hare Krishnas? He goes, well, I have a very nice relationship with them, but I, I, don't, I can't join them because I can't give up smoking. But then uh, smoking gave up him because he ended up with, with cancer from smoking and then he couldn't smoke anymore. So it was all these different pleasures that Maya had given him. I mean, and you talk about facility. I mean, did he have facility? He had lots of facility to enjoy, like King, like uh, Guru Kula Maharaj said about King Yayati, right? He, he just had all kinds of facility to enjoy. But just like in that last, when I first got here, we, the story was all about King Yayati. Everybody remember King Yayati? He had fi um, 49 wives. Uh, and he was, he went back and forth, you know, with the, uh, Try, uh, of being good and then having to and then trying to enjoy the material material world and then having it, things go terribly wrong like he got cursed with the old age and uh, then he somehow he, he managed to trade the old age in for young for youth but then he enjoyed for a thousand years and it just turned out like he just wasn't satisfied so he became a great devotee at the end of the story that was right before we went into this 10th canto. So George Harrison was like that also. He, uh, in the 90s, he started, he became very, very serious about his sadhana bhakti and Krishna consciousness. And he came to Vrindavan and uh, Preetu Prabhu t spent a lot of time with him. There's, uh, there used to be a display in the Berlin, Germany temple of all the pictures of, of Preetu and the German devotees with, with George Harrison. I, I don't think that display is up anymore, but those pictures are there somewhere. And you can see that George was really taking shelter of the holy names. He had his bead bag. He wore this nice white kurta and he had his tea lock on and became a real... Uh, it absorbed the Madhurya Ras in Vrajadam, chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Hare, Rama Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. He, and he chanted and took shelter of the holy name for the next few years until he left his body in the year 2000, surrounded by Vaishnavas who were doing kirtan. And we know that he w was certainly uh, given the favor of Sri Prabhupada because of the great service that he did. I know that um, a lot of us owe our Krishna consciousness to George Harrison. Um, is there anybody here that would say that it was by George Harrison that they became a devotee? I know Janani Vas did. Janani Vas, he uh, went to the con one of these concerts that the devotees, because, you know, when in 1969, George Harrison, after he became a devotee, then he made a, a record of, called the Radha Krishna Temple, an album. And the devotees became um, a rock band. And, was, and uh, they weren't particularly... Um, superstars actually all they all they did was just simply what we do every day you know that they play <laughs> madunga cartels and harmonium they were doing the morning program and george harrison pulled the whole thing into the S apple Records studios <coughs> and turned the you know it's just some simple vaishnavas that were doing them the regular kirtan that we have every day and recorded it and put some other instruments on it and turned the thing into a, a hit group. So then they 
became very popular. <coughs> For a little while, they were being, they were touring all over Europe, especially Germany and England. So they had a, um, I think most of us have read the Chasing the Rhino book by Shama Sundar. We've, a lot of us have seen that book. Well, in that book, it's, it's not the only place. There's many places. The Lila Marita. It's a big history. Yona's book, a Lifetime of Devotion. Because it is a very significant event in the uh, in Srila Prabhupada's preaching. It was part of the Hare Krishna explosion. You know, from 1966 until 1970, um, Hayagriva wrote a book called The Hare Krishna Explosion. So it was phenomenal if, if, how Krishna consciousness went from Srila Prabhupada being all alone with no money to doing his first Hari Nam Sankirtan and you know, meeting some devotees and, putting, and going out on Sankirtan in New York. And then that turned into... Uh, the first temple, and then Shri Prabhupada started making devotees. Vaishnava is that, and then Prabhupada, he, he immediately had a vision that this handful of teenagers were going to go and open temples all over the world, and which they did, actually. You know, then he start, they started going, and first they went all over America, and then they, you know, so the Krishna consciousness went, it was just actually phenomenal. If you've seen the movie, the, the um, Hare Krishna, the, the, the mantra, the Swami, and the, the movement, it's, it, you can see that it just happened really fast. You know? that, like when I joined Krishna Consciousness in 1974, um, we were, devotees were just joining. You know, this went until Srila Prabhupada well, it's still going on today. But I, I shaved up with, that, that was like a significant thing. When you join, you move into a Krishna ashram and then you shave your head. Just like all you devotees, right? You, you're new men. So there was that ritual. You, you, you'll never forget when you shaved your head the first time, right? Or for, for Mataji's, the first time he put on a sari and put on a tilak, right? It was significant moment in our lives. So Srila Prabhupada had all these recruits that were coming in and uh, this Hare Krishna mantra was spread especially by the what was called the Radha Krishna temple. That was, well Prabhupada went to San Francisco and then uh, the biggest rock groups of the time, the Grateful Dead, Janis Joplin. Uh, Janis Joplin had an amazing voice and she, a very powerful voice that she, that was singing right as Prabhupada came in the door for the and the, the big concert. All these these people were friends of the devotees, and they hosted Sri the Prabhupada and let him spread Krish, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra to um, have a, a ballroom full of like hundreds of people. And, and, and then they probably had Harinam every day and the devotees started feeding all the people in San Francisco. They had what was called the Summer of Love. Now the history is that uh, Srila Prabhupada was the one who made the Summer of Love full of love. <laughs> Where'd the love come from? It's in a... Western history, they give a lot of uh, attention to the summer of 1967 in San Francisco because it changed the course of history. It changed the youth of America and in this way it, it affected the whole world because after all America, uh, what America does has a tendency to affect the whole world, especially back then. So, 
if you look at 1966 in San Francisco, every, what was there that, that wasn't there in 1967? I mean, you know, 1966, the Beatles came to San Francisco. There was also LSD. There was so many, um, all the same parks, all the same places, all the same people. So what happened in 1967 that made uh, the, a significant change in history that, that you know, that included things called love beads and flower power and vegetarianism. You know, what, where did all that come from? Well, we know that it was this divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Prabhupada, he brought the whole show. He brought the, he brought the flowers, like I have flowers right now. Uh, that Prabhupada brought in the, the, the chanting of the beads. He brought in neck beads, japa beads. He brought the love beads. He brought the, the diet. The devotees, they serve prasadam because, the, you know, the hippies, as they became called, uh, didn't really have any way to eat except for the devotees, except for Prabhupada. I mean, they didn't, they had this philosophy where you turn on, tune on, and drop out, and just, and love everybody. Well, that didn't really bring in a systematic uh, organization of, of, of Prashadam, you know, the, except for Prabhupada. There was nobody, there was no food, like they, they, they would uh, hang out in Golden Gate Park, and then, then the next morning, like, they're really hungry. So there was one place where they, that they could get something to eat. And it was, it was Bhagavat Prashadam. And Srila Prabhupada, he uh, had the devotees just gather boga and then cook and serve out. They were serving 150 to 200 people every single day in the year 1967, if you can imagine. Out of a little storefront that's about a one fourth as big as this room, all the devotees were, were generating that kind of energy. And then they had the first Rathi Archer. Like Srila Prabhupada said that Prabhupada was looking out the window and he saw this uh, he saw a, a, a truck go by, a flatbed truck. And Prabhupada said that uh, he told Shama Sundar, Shama Sundar, come here, I, I, I have an idea. We'll call, we're going to take the Rath Yatra festival that's been in Puri for thousands of years and we'll perform it here in San Francisco. And Srila Prabhupada, he made a little drawing of a, of a truck and he, and he put four, four walls and he, and, he sh and he made a design for the Rath Yatra cart, the first Rath Yatra cart. So the devotees had brought for the first Rathi Yatra. And then, that was 1967, 1968. In 68, Prabhupada opened the Los Angeles temple. And then Tamal Krishna Goswami became, started to uh, show his glories. He, was, he, was, he became the Sankirtan leader for ISKCON. This, this is ISKCON was only a year, a, less than two years old. And then we have a Sankirtan leader. His Holiness Srila Tamal Krishna Goswami. And then he organized the Los Angeles Temple and, and to go out on Harinam. And with Vishnu John Swami, and they would have Harinam and Sankirtan and distribute Back to Godhead magazines all day long. And they started, money started coming, rolling in. And then devotees went and opened temples all over the place, including Montreal, Canada. And then from Montreal, they springboarded to England. You know, we call springboards like, well, I don't know if any of you ever, you don't have so many swimming pools over here, but in America, we have a lot of swimming pools. And they always have a springboard that goes boing, and then you jump off of it and land in the water. 
So from Montreal, the six devotees, Garuda, Gurudas, Yamuna, Janaki, Mukunda Maharaj, Shaman Sundar, and Malati, and little Saraswati were sent into England and they met George Harrison of the Beatles and started, they opened the, they got help from these different rock stars um, like Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones, he donated money for the uh, marble and the, the, the wood, you know, so that they could build a temple. They rented the, they got the first temple in Bury Place and then started making devotees and then they made this record and then they became a rock group that that was invited to different places so they put on shows and late at night and it would be you know there'd be the 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 lineup would be different really big famous groups you know it would be like Jimi Hendrix and then the Moody Blues and then it'd be the Radha Krishna Temple so this this was very effective actually so one day they had a big huge concert that so many people came and the devotees were chanting they got so many people to chant and um, Janani Vas and Punky Jungri wandered in there and became devotees right and here Janani Vas is here now and he's told me this story and I, it's an ecstatic story. He became a devotee because just see how Krishna consciousness spread. Prabhupada said it was spread like wildfire. Um, he told that to Tamal Krishna Goswami about China. He said, just go get it going. He said, just light it. And then uh, you'll see it'll, 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 it'll spread, you know. Like, uh, I grew up in California where we have a lot of wildfires, it's, it's not unusual. You, you may have read about them sometimes. Somebody goes out and has a campfire and then they get a, they start the, the forest on fire in just one small little place and then the, the whole mountains burns down, you know, and they, it burns for days. It's a bit of a tragedy. But it's an example that Prabhupada used for spreading Krishna consciousness that you just ignite it and then, you know, one person becomes Krishna conscious and then they go and make other people Krishna conscious. Uh, look at Gaur Govinda Maharaj, somebody, he, he was, he's still preaching, isn't he? Right? You know, he's one of Iskand's greatest saints. Well, he came to Krishna consciousness because uh, he got a Back to Godhead magazine from somebody. Somebody took the trouble to, dis to distribute a, a BTG and then he, you know, look at the result. So many people have become his disciples. So I also experienced this that I, 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 I wish I could thank the devotee that uh, first contacted me. He was out in front of a department store in Los Angeles in 1973. I was 15 years old and I'd seen the devotees one at a time. One thing that, one thing that, that was very p powerful was the devotees would always dress as devotees when they went out in, the, in those early days. Uh, some people say that it's better preaching to wear Western clothes uh, sometimes that's it's true that if you don't wear Western clothes, you won't be able to, to distribute books in some places. But uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj used to always point out that it's preaching to, to wear our Vaishnav clothes also, you know. Like Prabhupada said about the devotees in England, that in traditional Vaishnav dress, uh, or like Lord Chaitanya, he, he appeared in the garb of a devotee, there's a verse that says that. So Lord Chaitanya, he didn't just happen to wear dhoti and and uh, the way he you know shaved head. He didn't do that it's just because that happened to be the fashion at the time. Actually, the scene was set so that the Lord would appear, and that we dressing like this, we're following the standard of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
So I remember first seeing the devotees from a distance and we call them Zulus because we didn't know what to think about them. You know, the shaved heads, you log shit. I, one thing I could tell though was that they were very bright and effulgent. And everybody else seemed like dark in comparison. Like the first time I saw Srila Prabhupada, he came in the front door of the Atlanta temple and he just seemed to light up the whole place. So Vaishnavas are very, they, sometimes they say that they glow. Uh, we see that Krishna he always has an effulgence, right? Sometimes he, even the, when they dress the deities, they have an effulgence of Krishna. So I was uh, going to the store and I didn't have much money on me. So the devotee, he, he, I didn't get a book, but he, he gave me a stick of incense and I gave him a nickel and two pennies. And he took that money and put it into the collection for the, for the temple that day of his new Dwarka and that, that began my devotional service and the devotee who began my devotional service was it didn't look like he was really having a very good time it was in February it was really cold and his nose was red and I noticed that his socks didn't quite match and he was he wasn't really having that much fun. I could tell that he wasn't having a really, you know, he was, he was having a pretty hard day on Sankraton. And he was all by himself, and he was left there the whole day from morning until, they, until it got dark. So he, that he might not have known that how he made me a devotee, but actually my devotional service began on that day. And all of us here, right, we all had that miracle where somehow we, we became an association of Vaishnavas and by their association we took up the process of Krishna consciousness. So that's the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu from uh, my experience. Is there any uh, comments or questions that anybody has about Jivana. Okay. I just wanted to mention one interesting detail about the Radha Krishna album that they recorded. That George booked some time at Apple Records, which is a big company, and they recorded, they had uh, Jamuna and Mukunda singing, and they had all playing different instruments. There's a few devotees there. And when they finished, the devotees were ecstatic. That, that was fantastic. It was great. And George Harrison said, no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's, some, it's something missing. We need a bigger chorus. So it sounds like there's so many people chanting. And the devotee said, okay, well, you know, we'll come back tomorrow. We'll see if we can grab a few more people. He says, no, 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 we got we to record this today. He says, hold on. And he left the recording studio, and he came back about five minutes later with every single employee from Apple Records, the security guard, the secretaries, uh, the cleaners, the, the head people, 30 of them. And so they're all singing in the chorus for Hare Krishna on this album. And the devotees are looking at him and all going, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Well, they had never chanted before. He said, but by the end of the record, everybody was just in ecstasy. And so it came across on this particular album. But not everybody on the album was a devotee. That's the power of the holy name. I um, got invited to a preaching program a couple of months ago I was, and it, it showed me that the Hare Krishna explosion isn't just something that happened once upon a time but it's still happening to, to this day we went to a little town called uh, Champapura a train stop town and uh, I was with some Russian devotees and uh, a few other Bengalis this is um, one devotee that organizes these things. And we were there, we were ISKCON, you know, and I felt like the, the only Christian consciousness they had there was a, a, 
a really small Gaudiya Math temple with a, a single sannyasi that invited us. So this was just uh, maybe like three months ago. So we got out there and we set up the sound system and, and had a kirtan. And there's maybe about 10 of us at the, all together, ISKCON devotees. But we got that, that whole town, that whole village, I wouldn't call it a town, I'd say a village. It wasn't that many people, maybe about 150 or so. But everybody came to see us and I felt so happy to be, you know, to be part of ISKCON, you know, that, and being on this preaching engagement because we really brought the party. And we started chanting and, and people were listening and then it, it, some uh, the devotees stood up and started dancing. And then the crowd stood up and started dancing. So within 15 minutes or half an hour, suddenly this whole village is chanting Hare Krishna ecstatically and doing, uh, you know, like the locomotion, you know, where you get behind these people and you, you do circles. They were doing circles. There was people grabbing hands and doing spin arounds and dancing, you know, side by side, back and forth. You know, the, the Mataji's and the men kind of polarized and were dancing uh, like a, a, it was a, like a, a contest, almost a dance-a-thon. And everybody became completely overwhelmed in ecstasy from the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya. So I just want to recommend it. You know, if, if that's, that's how we're going to be able to go back to Godhead is by getting the mercy of, and giving the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. I mean, some of, some of you are natural born Brahmins and your heart's been clean since you were you know, since you were raised in this great culture, the Vedic culture. But there, there's some of us that actually don't do well with um, purification until we, able, until we actually get the mercy of Krishna and be able to spread the holy names. I'd like to end with just a quick story of Sudama Prabhu, for instance. He was a, a, a sannyasi, African-American devotee, uh, black man, I guess you could call it, the, and he uh, was very extremely talented. He put on a lot of plays. He put on one play, and he produced Prabhupada a lot, and he organized the what was the Vaikuntha players, put on Ramayan play, and did a lot of great service. The Age of Kali, he put on the Age of Kali. And Prabhupada, and he opened a temple in Japan, and Prabhupada told him, because you've opened a temple in Japan, I will take you back to Godhead. And Siddharma's mother, she, had, she met Srila Prabhupada, and, and she uh, complained that he's going to, because he's not Christian anymore, he'll have to go to hell, because he's, he's, he's rejected Jesus Christ. And Prabhupada said, no, he hasn't rejected Jesus Christ. He's just serving Jesus in this way. And I guarantee you that I will take your son to the kingdom of God. So Sudama Maharaj, he left his body a, a few years ago. And he had, his son, uh, got, he got out of practice. And kind of, you know, devotees are so, kind of like submarines. Sometimes, you know, they sort of, go under somewhere and you're not really sure when they're going to come back up. But he, he came back to the Association of Devotees and had a roaring kirtan and, and his passing. And then he said, Prabhupada is here for me. And he could see Srila Prabhupada who took him back to the kingdom of God. So Prabhupada can take all of us back to the Krishna Loka, back to, or uh, into his pastimes, wherever Prabhupada's preaching now, we can all go there. We just have to j uh, get on this, uh, the, this uh, love train, the, the 
Sankirtan Bhu and Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gornitai Ki Jai.